How's it going, everybody? And uh, volume is good. We're going to continue on in Acts 17, verses 25 through 32. That's the column we're on, column two of my dad's old King James Bible. And we'll be in Daniel 9, 19 through 24. I did cut that one a verse short so that tomorrow's study will be about the abomination of desolation, sort of all-inclusive. I didn't want to leave off uh, verse 25. But let's go ahead on. Let's let's just read the New Living, and if we find something wrong, we'll take it to the King James. And if it's still ambiguous, we'll take it to the Greek, just like we have to do with John 3.16, of course, because God doesn't love everybody. He loved cosmos in the Greek, which first usage and main definition is harmonious arrangement. It's appropriate harmonious arrangement is order of things. And of course, we have turned that word world to mean our meaning for world. And in the King James, they placed that word as world. But in the Greek, it was cosmos that meant our meaning for world, but it had other meanings also. It had eight different usages. Go to Strong's Concordance, Blue Letter Bible dot org, I believe it is. Cosmos is what God so loved. Anyway, and human hands can't serve his needs, for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. So they're talking to Pete. He's telling them about uh, our creator, because these Greeks worshipped uh, an unknown God, and he's describing, he's telling them who the God they don't know is. Because it was the unknown God as if it was just one. So that's why, anyway, from one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. And let's read these two in the King James. Neither is worshipped with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Well, we're going to have to take this to um, the, uh, the King James because he's talking here about sheep that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live, and it's talking, of course, about sheep, for he have chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world. And move and have our being as certain also of our own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We, the sheep, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, the sheep, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, silver, or stone, or graven by art and man's device. Let's go back to uh, Craftsman of Gold, Silver, and Stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him, for he has set a day for judging the world 
with justice by man he has appointed, and he has proved to everyone who by this raising him from the dead. When they heard Paul speak about the resurrection of the, and we'll go back to the King James too. When they heard this resurrection of the dead, some laughed in contempt, but others said, we want to hear more about this later. Let's continue at verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And remember the all men gives way to a subset or the excuse me the word all gives way to a subset in this particular case the sheep like where it said to john all men seeketh after thee was that all the men of the earth and they said to john all men seeketh after thee And again, very confusing. Let's go New Living. When they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. Let's go to King James. And when they found him, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. Men is added. It is all. And all gives way to a subset group, which you go back to here. Now, God commandeth all of the subset of sheep, all men everywhere, to repent. Because he have appointed a day in which he will judge the world, which are the goats. No, not in this case. Remember the world. And let's go ahead and go to that. Let's go to Cosmos G2889. Cosmos G2889. And you'll get Blue Letter Bible. You start looking at the usages. The first usage is appropriate, harmonious arrangement or constitution, order or government. That's what God so loved. Come down to definition. This is probably from the base G2865. It says orderly arrangement. That's what God so loved, his arranging. Then it's followed by decoration. It's his adornment. It's the apple of his eye that he loved. It's his sheep that he loved, not the whole world. Then it says by application. Then it says uh, the world in wide and wide or narrow sense, including its inhabitants, literally or figuratively, morally, and then it gets back to adorning or world. So you can see the myriad of definitions. Look at the usages. The first one again: the appropriate harmonious arrangement. What did God so love? That's what He loved. His adornment, His decoration, His adornment, His harmonious arrangement. The arranging of a sheep. The arranging of the apple of his eye, um, arranging of the stars, the heavenly host, as and, and, and the Lord of hosts is how he's referred to so many times, as the ornament of the heavens. Then another usage of cosmos is the world, comma, the universe, which there's nothing above the firmament except God in heaven. You know, it's not like NASA won't lie to you. The circle of the earth, the earth, because it is a circle inside of a square. It is flat. The inhabitants of the earth, men, the human family. So that's another usage for world or cosmos, which is everybody, which is now how we use our world today. Then it says. One usage for cosmos was the ungodly multitude. The whole mass of men alienated from God. So it's, it's his sheep. It's the world, the earth. It doesn't even include people. It's just the earth. Or then it's all the people of the earth, then it's the ungodly people of the earth. So there's all these different usages in the Bible for the word cosmos. So you see how this gets very, very intricate and complicated.
So he will appointeth a day where he will judge the world. That's that ungodly multitude meaning in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men. Is that not the subset group? And that he hath raised him from the dead. Subset of sheep. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So not even the same, con not even really the same meaning. They, they, they were saying another time, I think, in the New Living, but it's kind of like what when you read it in King James, it's like, we want to hear this again. We'll tell us more right now. Anyway, oh, Lord, here again, this is the ending of Daniel's lamentation. Oh, Lord, here. Oh, Lord, forgive. Oh, Lord, hearken and do. So he's telling God what to do. He is telling God to forgive his people, his bloodline, his Israelite, his church before the new covenant. And some that were not of the bloodline sojourned with them. They had to uh, get circumcised. They had to have an animal sacrifice, unblemished lamb or, or two turtle doves. And they had to be dipped in water, completely washed which is what the baptism John the Baptist was giving. But also he added the caveat of to make way for the Lord to repent because the kingdom was at hand. But then he later said, but one will come after me that will baptize, not with water anymore, but with the Holy Spirit. And it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism will and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus, and Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So faith comes by hearing Jesus, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. The faith in the baptism is the same, coming from the Lord. You get a spiritual calling. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication, what I refer to as a lamentation, uh, before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. So, in other words, I'm doing this for the church. I'm doing this for all of us, this, this prayer. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. See, Daniel, at the very beginning of your lamentation or at the beginning of your supplications, I received a command. To come forth and show you, or in the King James, at the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, for you are greatly loved by our God. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city. So again, that city was referred to as church back then in the old covenant. In the new covenant, that land over there is nothing more than Sodom in Egypt, where our Lord was crucified is exactly what it says in Revelation 11.8. They have a pyramid with an all-seeing eye on top of their Supreme Court. Just use the name of that land and put all-seeing eye on top of that word, that of that land. All-seeing eye on top of blank Supreme Court. 
and you'll see it. It'll pop right up in a Google search. Click images. Spiritually, Sodom and Egypt. It's already Egypt, like I said, Pyramid of the All Seeing Eye on top of their Supreme Court. And as far as Sodom, I will just tell you that their uh, capital begins, you know, it's a T E L dash. I think it's A V I V. We know that Mr. Big moved it to. Jerusalem, we think, I guess officially, but that previous capital, T-E-L dash, A-V-I-V, -I, I think it's spelled, is as liberal as San Francisco. There's your Sodom, and Benjamin Netanyahu bragged about that, used all the letters. We know the letters, begins with an L, the alphabets. He bragged about it. about how they were all about that movement. So it's already Sodom in Egypt. And it has been ever since they crucified Jesus there. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets, Jesus said. Then they killed Jesus there. And then it's ground zero for the evil. It's the great city of mystery Babylon because that's where the Antichrist will perform the abomination of desolation. And then it's destroyed at the end of the book of Revelation as a cleansing process. And then the Lord sets up camp there. Of course, thousand-year millennial reign after it's cleansed. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression. And about that holy city also, Galatians 3.16, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Galatians 3.19, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Whoops, it's 329. So when you go to these, we know that the, the promises of that land over there was made to Abraham, people will say. Well, it's, it's Genesis uh, 12, 12.2 or 12.3 or 12.4, I think. The promise to Abraham concerning Jerusalem. So it was Genesis 12, 1, 12, 2, 12, 7, the promised land, all that kind of stuff. Um, Genesis 12, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Lord said unto Abram, uh, get thee out of thy country down here. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in all shall the families of the earth be blessed. Lord, son, get out of that country and thy kingdom and thy father's house unto, unto a land I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, right, of that land. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And people are like, well, you got, you got to honor that land over there or else you're going to be cursed. Nope, been fulfilled. Now to Abraham and his seed, seed were the promises made. Not to a landmass, but to his seed. And he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And they killed Christ there. On that land, didn't they? So the promise is really about Jesus and to Jesus, because Jesus came from that bloodline. And then you go down to Galatians 3.29 and it says, And if ye be of Christ, a sheep, then ye are Abraham's seed. Remember, even if we're not of the bloodline, we are grafted in Jews. Romans 11, and heirs according to the promise. So it's not about land or people living there. Now, I want to take you to Revelation 2, 9.
I know that works in tribulation of thy poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them. Who's them? Which say that they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Let's go to Revelation 3, 9. Let's double down. Behold, I will make them. Who them? Of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. So, again, it's not about what people say they are or what they do or about landmass. It's about being a sheep. That's what that promise above the Old Testament promised land was about. It now transforms in the new covenant to his people, the sheep. Sheep who get to spend what is known as the thousand years when Satan is chained. They get to spend time with Jesus on that cleansed land after the great tribulation. And after God's wrath. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. So we're talking about the very end times, what I was just telling you about. And to make reconciliation for iniquity. So to make recompense for the sheep. The great tribulation is to cleanse. All the lost sheep on the earth, we all through much tribulation enter the kingdom. That's Acts 14, 22. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. That's for the sheep that live eternally with the Lord. And to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy. I'm glad you're here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.